Okay. We bring in Nathan Kirschbaum of Kirschbaum, one of our uh, gold sponsors. Going to take just two minutes here and go over a couple things. Hi, Nathan. Hey, how you doing? Good. 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 Let me get my. Uh, so it says cannot share screen. Oh, uh, yep. I have to stop one second. You should be good. All right. Great. All right. Thanks. Alrighty. One second here. Get this situated. Kind of. <clears throat> there we go. All right. Uh, there we go. And share. All right. So you should be seeing my screen now. Yep. All right. Awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, hey everybody. Uh, so I'm Nathan from Kirschbaum. Uh, it's great to uh, be here again. Uh, this year we have a short message for you. Uh, you're about to see one of our uh, senior developers. For those of you who don't know Zach, uh, he's a lead developer on our team who specializes in wellness and the psychology of development. Um, so here we go. Oh, one second. I think you have yeah. to uh, Hold on. share with uh, the, checking the sound. All right, let me see. I thought I did that. Well, let's try again. Thank you for letting me know about that. No problem. Um, share. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Um, you see on the right screen there? Yep. All right, let's go now. There we go. The world has changed quite a bit over the past few years. We here at Kirschbaum have been remote since the start. And whether you're new to the remote work scene or not, we'd like to offer you a warm welcome. Welcome. Now, we know some people have had a bit of trouble adjusting, and that's a normal part of the de-starching process. There may be some side effects, and that's okay. When you're a fully adjusted member of the remote community, you'll learn to embrace all the wonderful benefits that working from home can offer. As the resident health and wellness dude, I'd like to offer you three tips to help you along the way. First, remember to stay professional. Just because you're at home doesn't mean you can be a slob on camera. When in doubt, think 21st century mullet. Business on top, party on the bottom. Second, since you're nice and comfy on bottom, remember to move throughout the day. Take breaks often, aiming for at least a five minute break once an hour. Your mind, body, and health will thank you. Third, remember to stay flexible. You're at home and no one can see you when the camera's off. So make sure to take the time to do those embarrassing stretches. Like this one. Or this one. Or this one. We're glad that you're here and know that you'll be a pro in no time if you're not already. The remote work scene. <laughs> yep, now we're talking about not safe for work. And whether. Uh, All right, I hope you enjoyed that as much as we enjoyed making it. Uh, for anyone interested in working with the Zach and a bunch of other problem solvers who love to have fun, um, please do reach out. Uh, we are hiring. So enjoy the rest of your Laricon. Awesome, that was great. Mm -hmm. I had not seen that. Um, really good job. Look at the production value on here. It's just, it's getting, it's getting high. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Yeah. Take care. All right.
definitely everybody check them out over in the digital swag page. Also, um, if you want to get in touch with them about you know doing work with them, or obviously if you're interested in working for them, check out their website. And uh, yeah, they've been really great to work with uh, as far as I'm concerned, really great group of people there. So check them out. All right. All right, two more talks. I'm gonna bring Caleb in now. Here he comes. There he is. How's it going? Hey, what's going on? Not much. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, that, that was video. great. That's great. Thoroughly really entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> too many visuals at some points, but. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Let's do it. Um, sharing screen. Yep. Looks good. Great. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Sup, Laricon. Thanks for having me back. Um, I'm going to talk about Livewire and actually not as much about Alpine. I realize that I'm a total fraud. I just remembered or saw that, that my talk title has Alpine in it. Not going to be much Alpine, but I'm coming at you with a bunch of cool Livewire. So yeah, Livewire and Alpine are my projects, our projects, the community, and, uh, and they're going pretty well over the past few years. And these Laricons are kind of like benchmarks for me. Every time I do one of these talks, I kind of look up a bunch of the metrics and compare them. And, uh, and yeah, we're, you know, the curve is we're on the up and up, very promising, big numbers. Um, so first big number, 1.6 million installs for Livewire. I think that's pretty cool because six months ago, the last Laricon, I think it was like 300,000 or something, a measly 300,000. And uh, we're up to 1,383 sponsors uh, for Livewire, which is fantastic. It allows me to work on all this stuff full-time and actually hire contractors to help me. So thank you so much. That's up from like 600 something last time. So growth, hashtag growth. And also stars, GitHub stars. What more valuable metric is there? Uh, 10,000 GitHub stars up from 5,000. So good stuff all around. Thank you all so much for caring about the projects and installing them and starring them on GitHub and sponsoring me on GitHub as well. So let's freaking do this thing. All right, today's talk, I've been coming at you with big stuff. So every Laricon that I've done has been this is a really cool feature in Livewire, or this is how you can use Livewire in a big way to recreate Twitter or, you know, farm out like all of your front end and use it to do forms and real-time validation and data tables and all this stuff. And I thought, I think I, I, I want to dispel the myth that you need to like buy into Livewire in any big way. So I thought, why don't I do a talk where I show you all the small things instead of all the big things? So that's what we're going to do is use Livewire in really small ways. And some of the inspiration from this talk for me came from using Transistor by my good friend, Justin Jackson. Um, this is a great, fantastic app. If you're a podcaster, you should use it. And we use it for our podcast, No Plans to Merge. Shout out to No Plans to Merge on Fridays. We record me and my buddy D. Cole. We have a great time. Um, and actually, Daniel just quit his job, so he's looking for work, freelance work. He's charting out as a freelancer, so go hire him if you're looking for a great tall stack dev, Laravel dev. Um, so yeah, so no plans to merge. We use Transistor to host it, and every time I use this app, it just fills me with the warm and fuzzies because look at that. There's like an actual full page reload, but it's super fast, and everything is like mostly static with a few little whiz bangs and doodads. To me, it's like an ode to Mm, to the way that I probably like to write apps best, a traditional Laravel app with blade and page views, or sorry, full page loads, uh, and then little bits of interactivity sprinkled in here and there. But for me, this really is a good example of an app that this is like every app I've ever really worked on. You have data and stuff, you have more data and more stuff, and a bunch of form fields and buttons. Like what else is there to building applications than form fields, buttons, and data stuff? So looking at this, I started kind of poking around and being like, what are the parts of this that you couldn't just use plain HTML and CSS for? Um, and, and that's when I started thinking like, Liveware is actually a really good fit for those things. So I want to talk about those things. And another app that I think is a good example of this kind of thing is Laravel Forge. It's a bunch of forms and buttons and does some other, you know, great stuff, but 
but that's really the bulk of it. And, but there are a few places where you need that good, good interactivity. Let me move my face down here. Um, yeah. And in those places, what are you going to do? You can't use HTML and CSS to get a deploy button to actually, I'm actually deploying the Livewire site and that's not necessarily meant to be a stunt, but I guess it is now a stunt. Um, but yeah, you hit that deploy button. It's all live and reactive. You can't just do that with HTML and CSS. There's some reactivity going on there. So we're going to work on our own version of Forge called Laravel Frog. It's brand new. It doesn't have all the features of Forge yet, but it's got a bunch of them. And this is going to be our muse for this talk, where we're going to go through this very static app that has no interactivity at all, just a bunch of page loads, buttons, data stuff, you know, uh, a form or two. And we're going to soup it up with Livewire. Before we jump into the code, let me give you a tour of the four stops we're going to make on this journey. There's going to be four basically areas of this app that are too staticky and we need to make live with Livewire. So I'm going to walk you through them. The first one, when we go to add a server, you type in the server name, you select a language for the server, and now you want to select a framework, but you have this big wad of frameworks. They're not sorted by the language that you selected, which is no bueno. And this, this, could, this list could be absolutely massive. Um, so we're going to use Livewire to pare it down so that when you select one of these, the next list that's a chain select, the next list is contextual. It's filtered by whatever you selected before it. So we'll get to that. Um, and then after we do that, there's this restart button for restarting a server. Right now it's a form submission. So there's no like user feedback or anything. It's just this full page load. And we want something a little bit more whiz bangy and doodaddy than that. So we're going to hit that restart button with Livewire. And then inside of the server page, we have our, you know, our server analytics. Clearly this website is extremely popular. Uh, we're looking at three visits today. Um, just kidding, it's dummy data. It would be through the roof. All right, so this is a bunch of data that we loaded from a database. Notice when I load this page, if I refresh this page, it takes like a full second, which is super duper long. If I refresh this page, it's instant. So I basically faked a really expensive database query to generate this data. Because when I've generated charts in the past for like admin panels, I go crazy with Eloquent and I slow down all these pages. So we're gonna talk about how we can use Livewire to defer the loading of this chart till after the page loads. Something you can't just do with HTML and CSS. And then this deploy button. This is literally like the most popular UI thing on Forge, I guarantee. I have no idea, but for me, like if you use Forge, this is the button you're constantly using. So I figured let's make a deploy button. Um, but we're, the deploy button's gonna have a little bit more behind the scenes and we're gonna see how we can use Livewire in um, when you're performing bigger actions like deployment where you're you know queuing a job and it might take five minutes or something like that. Okay, so that's the tour. Let's get started. The first place we're going to start is this create server page. And we're going to do the select drop down stuff. So here we go. We're going into the code. I assure you, it's pretty straightforward. This entire app doesn't have Livewire yet. It's just a bunch of routes. So here's that create server route, server slash create, and then return view create server. So very straightforward, totally vanilla. First step, uh, let's go into create server. Check it out. Okay, here's that blade file. Very simple. Uh, the only thing about this that's not ridiculously simple is X layout. If you're not familiar with blade components, go get familiar because they're totally awesome and I'm going to use them. But if you don't know about blade components, pretend this is just a magic HTML element. You don't really have to worry too much about it. And then on this page, we have a form tag where you're submitting this whole form. We have a text input. We have a select input for all the languages where we're looping through a bunch of languages from the database, just using Eloquent. And then this framework list where we're looping through all the frameworks from the database and then our create server button. So it's pretty straightforward. This is where we're going to start. But before we start, we need to actually install Livewire. So this is my favorite layer constant. I think I've done it every time and I will never pass up an opportunity. Oh, I have a dangling uh, earpiece thing. Okay. It was going to kill me. I know it was killing you. So we're gonna install Livewire because I never pass up an opportunity to show you how stupid easy and fast it is to install Livewire. So check it out, here it goes. It's a two-step process. First step, composer require Livewire slash Livewire. You hit enter and you do it. I already did it, but you composer require Livewire and that's the first step. And second step is just include the assets, the front end assets that it needs. So we're gonna go into our layout layout.blade.php, 
and we're going to add Livewire CSS, Livewire styles. And then down here, we're going to add Livewire scripts. And that's going to load Livewire's JavaScripts. So that's it. Big reminder to everybody, that's all you need to get started with Livewire, nothing more. That's totally it. So now that we have Livewire installed, let's extract these static parts of the page into a Livewire component and make them dynamic. Great. So the first thing I want to note is like, what are we going to put inside the component? Are we going to put this entire page inside of the component? And I actually want to not do that. I want to like really demonstrate that we're using Livewire in small ways right now. I'm not going to use Livewire for this form. I'm going to leave the form the way it is. We're just going to take this, these two inputs and put them inside a Livewire component. The browser's not going to know the difference. It's still going to be a form submission. We're just going to make these dynamic with Livewire. So let's do that. Let's create a Livewire component. So Livewire, that's the syntax for creating a Livewire component. Just kind of like X hyphen, but Livewire colon. And we're going to call this language. Uh, what are we going to call this? Something really long and nasty. Server, language, and frameworks uh, fields. There we go. That's long and nasty enough. And let's actually create that component in our app. So to do that, artisan make Livewire server language and frameworks fields, and hit enter. Great, so that created for us two files. The class, that's the, the class portion of a Livewire component where everything starts. It's just a class that extends component, this Livewire component, and then has a render method that returns a blade view. Cool, so let's take a look at that blade view as well. Server, language, and frameworks blade, and that's it right there, okay? Let's actually sub this out with hello world. Or no, 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 that's so not cool. Hello, Laricon. Refresh, and now we have hello, Laricon spat out on the page. Nothing dynamic about this. Uh, so for we haven't added any live wire. It's basically like a blade include or a vanilla blade component. So let's take this bit of HTML and let's pop it into our live wire component right there. Great. Get that indentation right. Clean it up. And that's it. We've just taken these two select fields and popped them out of the form tag and into this Livewire component. And again, reminder to everybody that if we take a look at this, we have still a form tag and then a div that Livewire owns, but we still have the select drop downs and input. So to the browser, it's just a form submission. We don't have to change anything about that. All right, we're doing really well. Let's get back to this class. Cool. So what we want to do, I think our first little mission here should be let's hide this field completely before we select a language. So if we're not selecting a language, we're only seeing this dropdown. And this is a pattern that I guarantee you've seen a bunch. If you go to create a server in Forge, like here, here's a dropdown. I click something, something else shows up. If I change this to web server, more stuff changes. Conditional selects are like a ubiquitous UI pattern. I guarantee you've had to build them. I didn't, I was trying to find ubiquitous small UI patterns. And so I tweeted out like, oh, I came across this one just thinking about it. And I tweeted out like, when's the last time that you did something like this in an app? And it just, people flooded it like five minutes ago. Like I do this all the time, cars and makes and models and categories and types. And this is just such a common pattern. Um, so yeah, so let's, let's, let's see what Livewire can do. So back in the code, we need, somehow we need Livewire to know about the value of this select dropdown so that when we select something, we can perform some sort of conditional here that conditionally loads it um, if true or if false. So to do that with Livewire, we're gonna use wire colon model. Wire model is uh, part of the Livewire API, which basically says, hey, whatever value is currently set on this input, bind it to a public property on the class. So let's create a public property. This is gonna be called server, language ID, set it to an empty string by default, okay? So server language ID, and then wire model to server language ID. And to show you that this is all live and wired like, let's echo that out, server language ID, cool. So language colon, okay. So now we refresh, we have language and it's empty because it's an empty string for starters. Then we're gonna select PHP and bam, we have one. That's the ID of PHP, we select node, and now we have two. Perfect, so this is easy peasy. This is now a meaningful value and we can just write the blade that we want to accomplish our task. So this whole select, let's wrap it in a normal blade if statement. We'll say if selected language server ID, sorry, what am I saying? Server language ID, 
I probably rehearsed this a thousand times and should have called it selected language ID, whatever. Okay. So if server language ID, here we go. There we go. It disappeared because it's empty by default. So this blade if isn't going to get hit. Cool. Now we select something like PHP and now we get that list. Awesome. So step one done. The next thing we want to do is when we select one of these, we want to filter out these results. And again, easy peasy, we have access to this variable in Blade that has the ID of the language. So instead of getting framework colon colon all from the database, let's do where language, oops, where language ID, paste it right in there, add a get, and this is just eloquent and uh, both literally and figuratively folks. So PHP, and there we go. There's all the PHP frameworks and node. And there's all the node frameworks. And if we select one of these, it's like PHP, it resets itself. Super clean, super tight. Um, that's that. Uh, let's see if there's any more improvements we can make. One improvement that I wanna make is we have two files for this, which feels a little weird. Like this file just doesn't seem like it's pulling its weight. And there's not a ton of HTML here. So a little trick, uh, and this is the same for blade components as well. Livewire components, you can, in the render method, you can just return a plain string of blade. So let's do that. We're gonna say return, and we'll use PHP's here doc syntax to return uh, just a string of all this blade. So we'll cut this out, paste it in, we'll get our indentation right, clean it up, okay. Great, so now the blade is all in line there. We can basically kill this file completely. So let's kill that file. It's all in one, one file, we refresh, and we're good to go. We have our interactivity, we can select our thing, and we can say laraconyo.com. And this is, oh, can't make it symphony, Laravel. We add it and there's laraconyo.com. Cool, so that's, uh, that's magic trick number one, how you can use Livewire for conditional selects. You can apply that same principle to all sorts of different like uh, form input dynamic things inside of a form. There's maybe you want real-time validation for one field but you don't want to use Livewire for the entire form, which by the way, Livewire is great at handling forms themselves, but that's not what we're here for today. So there's lots of ways that you can use that conditional selects, chain selects, um, all sorts of cool stuff. So dig it. All right. The next thing we're going to do is handle this restart button. So restart right now, when we click it reminder, it's uh, it's pretty lame. We don't get any real user feedback. It takes a bit to load to restart. It's a full form submission, we can do better. I feel like this is something that should be inline and reactive. So we're gonna take this button and we're gonna turn it into a live wire component. So let's do that. Let's get to that blade. Back to our routes file. This is on the dashboard now. So let's go into the dashboard and we're just grabbing all the servers from the database and popping them into the blade view. So go into the dashboard blade file and here's servers as server. And we're looping through, basically we have a UL and we're looping through all the servers for all these list items. So there they are. And then we're putting the server name right here. That's what you see. And then we have our fancy dancy uh, restart form button right here. And then an add server button that we don't care about. All right, so let's do that thing again where we take a bunch of HTML and we shove it into a Livewire component. So Livewire, and this is gonna be restart server button. Cool. And let's go ahead and create that artisan make live wire restart server button, button, restart server button. Now, if I hit enter, it's going to create two files. It's going to create a class and a blade view just like before. But remember how we were like, oh, this doesn't feel like it's pulling its weight. There's too many files. Let's reduce the amount of files and return a string. Well, we can do that uh, right away with this hyphen hyphen inline modifier when you're creating a live wire component. So if we say that now, when we open up a restart server button, we have that boilerplate all set up for us with the here doc. So a uh, quick validation here, throw in some mumbo jumbo and there it is. It loads up just like that. So let's take this HTML and pop it in here. Okay, cool, cool. So now we have this HTML in here and everything seems like we should be able to reload it and still get green, like everything should be fine. We reload it and we have an error. Undefined variable dollar sign server, and there it is. So in our blade template, we're using this server variable, but it doesn't actually exist. And this is because Livewire components can't access the scope around them. It's the same thing with blade components. 
So we need to actually explicitly pass server into the component like this, okay? So that's the syntax to pass a parameter into a component. And now we can receive that in our mount method. So server, server, this server equals server. I'm gonna type server like a thousand times. So just prepare yourselves, server. You know, it'd probably be nice if I didn't say it every single time, but I will. Okay, so we have server as a public property and we're pulling server in through the mount method because we're passing it in. That's where it's coming through. We're setting it as a property on this component. Now we're gonna refresh, see what happens. Cool, we're still green. Everything works really well. Great. One tip, here's a little hot tip nugget for you. If you didn't know this already. In Livewire, uh, Livewire, you probably heard me say is like death to boilerplate. I just can't stand boilerplate. So part of the design philosophy of Livewire is like if we can avoid, you know, lines of code that are repetitive and ceremonious and unnecessary, then we should. And so you can actually remove this mount method completely because it's not doing anything interesting. Livewire is smart enough to intuit that you have a public property for a server and you're passing a server in. So we can get rid of that, refresh, and it totally still works. Great. Um, awesome. So let's see, what else can we do here? This is all isolated inside the server button thing. We want to actually wire this up so that Livewire is handling the restarting, not that form submission. So we could actually just remove this action and method, but I have another little um, banger for you later, so I'm not going to remove this just yet. But what we want to do is listen for a click on this button while the page is loaded and live and do some PHP stuff. So let's add that wire click. This is another thing in live where you can say wire colon and actually any browser event, it could be click, could be mouse enter, could be whatever you want. So we're going to do wire click. And we're going to say, uh, this is where you pass in a method to call. So our method is going to be restart. Let's add that method right here. And for now, we're just going to DD, hey, Lara, con, yo, y'all, okay? And now we hit restart. And there we go, hey, Lara, con, yo, y'all. But what happened there? It actually submitted the form as well. So I clicked this, it worked. But now the form got submitted because we clicked on the button and it bubbled up to the form. So one way to prevent that is to use dot prevent, uh, which is the equivalent of prevent default that you're probably familiar with with browser events. So wire click dot prevent restart. And so this is going to basically, Liveware is gonna handle that restart and then it's not gonna let the browser do anything. So let's try that again, restart. And now that's right there and we're good to go. Awesome. So wire click dot prevent restart. We showed that, awesome. And so right now we're DDing this Hey Laracon, yo y'all. We can do a little bit better than that. So let's go into our routes file and actually look at restart server. So where's that restart server right here? And this is the code, super duper simple because it's a demo, server arrow restart. So let's do this arrow server arrow restart. And I'm just gonna flash you this method, method to show you what it actually is, it's just a sleep of two. That's it. So I'm just pretending to restart a server, but sleeping for two seconds to kind of demonstrate what a server restart might take, whatever. So now we're running actual PHP code. We have our live wire all set up. Let's see how we did it. Here we go, restart. Ta-da, uh, something happened, but we don't actually know if anything happened. There's no UI anything to signal to the user that something happened. And if we take a look in our network requests and we hit restart, a network request does get sent, takes that two seconds, and then it comes back. So it worked. We did do the restarting, but the user has no idea. So here's a tip. I try to not listen for clicks on buttons, but rather listen for submissions on forms, even if it's for a single button. I try not to leave dangling buttons around my app because forms, things like buttons actually belong inside forms for accessibility reasons like screen readers and also for keyboard usability reasons so that you can just hit enter and such um, and, and that. So this is kind of a smell to me. I try not to do this sort of thing. So let's get rid of that. Pop it in right there. And instead of listening for click on the form, we're gonna listen to submit. So if the submit event happens on that form and it could be triggered by anything inside the form, we're gonna prevent default because we don't actually wanna, we still don't wanna actually submit the form. We're preventing default, we're calling restart. And now we should be better off. And let's see if uh, we got any other goodies along the way. So I hit restart and there we go. Everything's working. And notice something else that happened. Automatically, 
Livewire knows if it's listening for a submit event, it's going to automatically scour the form tag for any input elements and button elements. It's going to disable button elements and mark inputs as read only, which is an incredibly helpful bit of like, it's just a chore that you have to do that by yourself. So Livewire just takes care of it. So now a user can't hammer that restart button. It's not going to submit a bunch of requests, you know, in success succession. Um, and it also acts as a loading indicator. It's perfect. You don't actually need a loading indicator sometimes. Maybe, you know, maybe this is enough. And I think it is enough in a lot of cases. It signals to the user that something is going on and it also signals that something is done going on. But we can do better than that. And Liveware makes it really easy to do better than that. So let's add ourselves a little bit of a loading state. So here we have this icon, X icon refresh. And then we have restart right here. So let's add a span and we're going to add restart ding. Okay. Refresh. There's restarting, but we only want to show restarting the ing part when a, a network request is out to the server. So to do that, we're going to add wire colon loading. And so this is Livewire's API for basically, if you attach this attribute to any element, it's, it's going to hide that element by default with CSS, and it's going to show it to you when there's a network request out to the server. So if we refresh, we don't see restarting. We hit restart, and there we go. We see restarting, and it's all instant. It's perfectly instant. Um, okay, we can do one better also, this, uh, this refresh icon. Let's spin it. And I just actually found out, like embarrassingly not long ago, that Tailwind has a whole utility suite for animations. So let's add a Tailwind class to make it spin. If we do class uh, animate spin and refresh, there we go. We get that spin. So here's what you can do to toggle classes with wire loading. Wire loading supports toggling an element like you saw, also toggling classes, and also toggling attributes. So we can do wire colon loading dot class refresh, it's not spinning, and now we click it, and now it is spinning, and we are ready to rumble. Cool. So how much better is that? This Everything concerned with restarting a server is encapsulated into a single file. The blade, the, the like uh, loading animations, the behavior of it, the actual PHP code is all isolated into a single file, which I think is totally awesome. So one more thing thing I want to show you along these lines. Remember how I left in the action and the method? So we still have the old school behavior where you can still submit that form manually. And for some people, there's a, this is a really cool way of using Livewire. If you're into this fancy word, graceful degradation, which is basically if you want to support browsers who are worse than yours, uh, you want things to degrade gracefully rather than just the entire app is broken. You might want the app to still work, maybe just not as nicely for somebody who doesn't have the fancy, dancy uh, stuff that you do. So if we actually disable JavaScript for this browser, so totally disable JavaScript, JavaScript doesn't even work right now, and refresh the page, Livewire is totally broken. There's no Livewire JavaScript or CSS working at all. But notice one, the whole page still loads perfectly because remember, Livewire is just blade until you do something live. So there's no difference in the startup. And then also, because we're not listening for that form submission to then do all our Livewire stuff, because Livewire is, again, broken, we hit restart, and it just falls back to the old behavior. So there's so many areas that you can use Livewire to augment your HTML. It doesn't have to own your HTML. It doesn't have to own a whole part of your app. It can just augment parts of it if you're into that sort of thing, which, honestly, I am not into that sort of thing. I've never really written an app that supports not having JavaScript, so that's me. Cool. So again, we're isolating that all into a single button, and and it looks great. So a reminder here that this is actually this is one of my favorite ways to use Livewire. Uh, probably my favorite way to use Livewire because it's so simple and small and atomic and encapsulated and whatever. And I actually see this quite a lot. In fact. The only place that I use Livewire on the actual Livewire docs is this button right here, become a sponsor to explore the code. This button hand, it's, handles becoming a sponsor. It handles sending the invite to GitHub to the surge repository. It handles all this stuff. And it's just one tag for one button and handles it all by itself. Uh, another place that I've seen this used in the wild is on Spotsy's uh, tutorial stuff. This mark is completed. That's a Livewire button. Like literally take a look. There it is, wire colon click. 
and then wire colon ID. So they're using LiveWire for the single button. It's such a nice use case. Um, so let me say again, and really emphasize this, if you don't want to use LiveWire, if you don't want to buy into some technology for your entire front end, that's not just HTML and CSS, I recommend or encourage you to not be scared to use it for one single button. And that's enough. It's plenty of value and it's very simple to get going. Cool. So let's keep going here. We've solved problem number one and problem number two, and now let's tackle three and four. So again, we're loading this page super slow because I added a sleep in PHP, but let's just pretend that this database query to get these visits is really expensive. So what we wanna do is defer the loading of this chart until after we load the page so that we can take that database query out of the path of execution until the page is already loaded and the user can already interact with stuff. So we're gonna use Liveware to do that. Let's dig into the code. So where are we? We're on the show server page. So this is server slash server ID, matches the route, cool. We grab the server out of the database and then we do something here. We're saying server arrow visits for chart. This is a little method that I made that just kind of scours the database, grab some stuff. And there's that sleep one right there and spits it out, spits out a tuple. Uh, this is a fun little note. Um, I think it's a fun, uh, often overlooked data structure in PHP. When, you, when there's two values that generally travel together, you can return them as basically two items in an array. Whoops, you don't even need to name the keys or anything. Just send out an array with two values and destructure them with PHP, which looks really nice. So little fun note there, but we're grabbing labels and we're grabbing values. So the labels being these at the bottom and the values being these on the side. And we're passing those into the blade view. And then we're also passing in the server to the blade view. So that's all that's going on inside the route. Let's dig into that blade view. Server.blade.php. Super duper simple. We have an H1 tag up here with the server name. There it is. Bada bing. Then we have a figure element here with our X chart. This is a blade component that I concocted for uh, to use chart.js to load a chart. And all it accepts is labels and values. Then we have the deploy button, which we'll get to in a bit. But this labels and values, just to make it uber clear what we're dealing with here, because I sort of thought for a second, like, you know, I've done charts before and I'm always kind of um, confused as to where to do the database logic, what the API is for the reusable chart component. And I feel like I settled on something that's pretty good. So I'll at least show you as a tip because in future apps for me, I'm probably, I think every app I'm probably going to work on in the future is going to have an X chart uh, component that accepts labels and values. I'll flash this to you just so you can be overwhelmed. Um, this is all the chart JS code that it takes to just create a simple chart, which is a little bit silliness, but once you get it done, it's set, good to go. If you're dying for that code, hit me up on Twitter and I can send you like a GitHub gist. So the labels and the values that we're passing in, just to demonstrate this, it's just an array of labels. So foo, bar, bazzlazzle, okay. And then values will do five, 10, and one. Great. These values have to match up with the labels, refresh. And it's still gonna take a bit, but there we go. We have five, 10, and one, foo, bar, basil. So it's very simple. All we're passing in is plain data. I just wanted to show you that so that you have context and you don't get too um, lost with just random, you know, hidden black box variables. Great. So this chunk again, we want to yank this out into a separate live wire component. So live wire colon, and this is going to be, let's see, server visits chart. Cool. And we know we're going to have to pass in the server because that's what we do now. So I'm just going to do that right now. Cool. Cool. All right. Server visits chart artisan make live wire server visits chart. We want that to be in line server visits chart. Here's that component with our render method right there. So let's grab this HTML, yank it out and pop it in right here. Cool, okay. So now Livewire owns this chunk, but if we take a look at this, it's using labels and values, which again, remember, we don't inherit scope from outside. So we're definitely gonna get an error, undefined variable labels or values, one of those. So let's, let's just see it undefined variable labels. There it is. It's going to show us our blade view labels. It's undefined. So we need some property called public labels. Oops. And we also need one for values. 
And remember, we also passed in the server. So let's define that up here. Great. So now we need values and labels. Now, remember before we were doing this work inside of the routes file. So inside this routes file, we're, we're getting the labels and values from the server model itself. So we need to move this logic into here somewhere. So this is the first we're gonna see, oh, actually not the first we're gonna see of the mount method. This is the method that gets run when a component is initialized in the initial loading of the page. So we can take all this stuff and this isn't where it's gonna end up, but I'm just trying to get to green. I'm trying to pull everything in and get, get us back to working before the magic tricks come out. So this arrow server arrow visits for chart. We populate this arrow labels and this arrow values. So now those two variables should be defined. And now the blade view has it. And again, we didn't actually do anything crazy here. We just got ourselves back to green. So refresh. Oh, we're actually going to get a new error because labels and values don't exist. So let's do that. Refresh. And it might have actually worked. I don't know why that worked. So here we go. We're back to green. We still have that slow page. Now it's time to solve the problem. We want to take this bit of code because it's slow, because I manually put a sleep in there, and because you may have a slow database query, and I want to remove it from the initial execution path. So let's rename this to something bespoke, like load chart data. Okay, now that we've done that, it's not a mount method, nothing's calling it, it basically doesn't exist. It's as if, it's as if I just deleted it. So refresh, cool, page is loading instantly, and nothing is happening here. So let's trigger this somehow. Let's do something manual, like add a button called load, wire click, load chart data. Load chart data. Okay, now nothing's happening. Let's look at our network tab here. We hit load, we fire off that Ajax request. It takes that second to load it all, and then it shows up. Awesome. So this is better, but Obviously this is ridiculous. We're not gonna have a load button for the user to load the chart. We wanna load it as soon as the page loads. So how do we do that? How do we trigger a load? There's a hundred different ways you can do it, but LiveWire provides a nice little helper utility called wire init. And wire init is like wire click, except when the page initializes. So we can call load chart data from wire init, delete that wire click. And we can actually delete that button altogether. And let's zoom in here so that we have nice full giant context. We added wire init to load chart data. And now let's refresh the page. Loads instantly. After one second of time, it then shows up all the data right there. So that's the work. That's really, it's incredibly simple, but it's actually a really powerful feature because if there's, you know, lots of whiz bangs and doodads and charts and things on your page that are expensive to load, but aren't critical for the first, you know, path of using your app, uh, you can very easily defer those loadings. But this looks pretty horrible. Um, we want a loading spinner. So you do whatever you want here. You could have a loading spinner, an SVG. Uh, you could concoct anything you want. For me, I have my own little chart hyphen loading that I threw together in Sketch. Um, doesn't look too bad, but a little bad. And that's what I got. So we're going to show this until we call that data and it's available. And then we'll show the other one. Super not hard to do because we're just using blade. So we're going to say if labels and values. So if those two things exist, then load the chart. Else, use that chart loading. And if, cool. So the first path of execution, labels and values is null. So we're going to see that chart loading. Then as soon as the page loads, that Ajax request goes out, we call restart or sorry, load chart data. And then we store the labels and values. And now we're gonna see it actually in the chart. So here we go. Let's see it work. We load the page, we get that loading indicator. I'll show that to you again. Loading indicator. And one second later, we see our chart. Super nice, super tight. Um, didn't take a ton of work, pretty cool. All right, so that's that. There's another little magic trick that I wanna show you. Let's say that you wanna make this chart live. So something like visits are constantly coming in. You wanna show the user an updated graph while they're on this page because maybe they leave this page open for a long time. So there's a few different ways you can do that in an app, but a really, really easy way with LiveWire is using wire colon poll, which taps into the feature of polling in LiveWire, which is basically instead of running a method at one time when an event is fired or when we init, wire poll allows us to fire a method on an interval. 
Okay, so wire pull, load chart data. And now check this out. We're not gonna notice any difference visually right now, but take a look at these network requests. We're now firing one off every two and a half seconds. I think that's the default for live wire. And so it's actually refreshing itself. Every 2.5 seconds, it's reloading that chart data. So let's take a look at that in action. I created a little uh, console command that we can run. So let's get that artisan, Laric con add visits. And let me pull this up. Can you see this thing? Oh, we gotta get this going here. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So as soon as I hit add visits, I'm just gonna add visits to the database. And with any luck, this chart's just gonna update. There it is, it updated. We can do it again and we could do it again. And every time new data comes in, that chart is gonna be refreshing in the background and it'll update when it has new updated data, which I think is pretty cool. So that's great. And polling is an incredibly powerful feature. It allows you to get all the real-time reactivity of something that you might you might think you need, like WebSockets and Pusher and, and Laravel Echo, which are all great tools. Uh, but sometimes polling does the trick for you and it's extremely simple. And because it's just using Ajax requests, it doesn't actually require any more infrastructure or anything like that. So polling is great, but here's the big con of polling. Here's why it doesn't always make sense to use polling. In our instance, we're hitting the server every two and a half seconds. That's a lot of server hits. Uh, I think we could do better than that. So here's the golden rule of using wire colon poll or any sort of polling. Poll as slow as you possibly can for the feature that you're building. So think about what is the maximum amount of time that I can set for that polling to make this feature still valuable to the user. So in this case, a chart like this, let's say I expect to maybe see new data every maybe 10 seconds, 30 seconds. So you can customize that with dot and then the number of seconds. We're gonna do five seconds so I don't have to sit here and wait for 20 seconds. Okay, so we load the chart and now five seconds later, we're gonna pull the server. And then another five seconds, we're gonna pull the server. So I highly recommend use polling in your apps um, and then upgrade to something like Laravel Echo only as you need to. Uh, start with polling because generally, um, so I recently uh, created an app for Disney Trivia Night for my wife and her friends. And I used polling to start and I and it, the performance started to get pretty bad as it got more popular. And I thought, oh man, like this app, this app is garbage because I'm using polling. I got to upgrade to Echo and Pusher. And I did, and it didn't get any faster. I realized I just had slow queries, slow database queries. So usually the performance issues you're going to run into first are not polling, but when you do, you can easily upgrade to something like Laravel Echo. I want to remind you here that Liveware supports Echo out of the box. And it's incredibly easy to make Echo call load chart data. I'll leave that up to you in the docs, kind of out of the scope of this talk, but just so you know that. Okay, great. So I think we've done pretty well for ourselves here. We've deferred the loading of a chart. Feel free to use this feature to defer the loading of all sorts of stuff, data tables, lists, charts, notification icons, all sorts of stuff. All right, so that's third one down. The fourth and final thing we wanna tackle here is this deploy button. So right now, when we hit deploy, it's a full form submission. Now deployment is uh, basically, I'm using it right here to represent something that might kick off a queued job, whether that's generating a, like an, a spreadsheet export or deploying a server. Like when you do that on Forge, it takes, you know, I don't know, 15 seconds or something. And, uh, and then show the user that the thing is done deploying. That's what we want to do. So it, it's not just as simple as wire loading anymore. We're actually dealing with queued jobs. So. Let's dig into the code and tackle this deploy thing. Okay, so deploy server, the deploy server button is on the serverblade.php file right here. We have this form tag and then this deploy button. So let's extract it out into a separate component, Livewire. And this is gonna be deploy server button, whoops, butto. And of course, like always, we're gonna pass in the server. Cool. All right, we're gonna grab that name Artisan make live wire. Oh no, I just did it. I created it without doing that inline. And I'll just take this opportunity to demo some parts of live wire that people might forget exist. So live wire actually has live wire colon make, which you saw me do make live wire because that's just intuitive. I, it actually supports both. Live wire make, there's copy, there's move, and then there's destroy, I think, or remove, honestly. I don't remember what the command is because you're like, how do you delete the component you just created? Is it delete? Is it remove? Is it destroy? 
I don't know. So I thought like, what's a good reliable mapping so that I don't have to look up what the word is for creating or making or, you know, or moving or copying. So I thought, well, I know the, the artisan or sorry, the console command, like bash commands for those things, like touch is creating in bash, RM is remove, MV is move and CP is copy. So I thought, why don't I just offer those as aliases? So you can do that. And I actually use them pretty often because I never remember which one is actually remove. In fact, I wrote the thing and I can't even tell you what remove is. So we're just going to use RM to undo what we just did. It's like, hey, do you want to remove those things? Yes. Now let's go back and re-add it, but with our inline flag so that we're only creating that one file. So deploy server button. Great, here's the file. We're gonna take this HTML, we're gonna pop it in. This is the same stuff you've been seeing so that now Livewire encapsulates this and we're gonna create our public server property right here so that everybody can see that. Awesome, and then if we refresh, we're still good, we're still green. We do have two deploy buttons though. Did I not save something? Yes, I did not save something. Cool, so we're back in action. Um, let's jump right to the chase. We're not gonna leave this action and method thing dangling around anymore. We're gonna cut right to the chase and listen for wire submit.prevent and call a method called deploy. Deploy, and then in here we can dd yo, 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 yo. I'm really curious like what you guys do for this. So I'm I'm like a yo yo yoer and then like a hey there er, you know? Like maybe sometimes foobar, but that would be kind of an interesting thing. So maybe like tweet out what what you use when you're just typing stuff to see like to see code get executed. Um, but I'm a yo yo guy. I'm also a yo yo. There's that's true as well. So we're going to hit deploy. It's going to hit this form wire submit.prevent and call this deploy method and DD yo-yo. So watch this. There I am, I'm a yo-yo. Cool, so instead of that DD, let's put in something meaningful, this server deploy. Now I'm gonna flash to you what this server deploy method does. Don't be, don't take it upon yourself to understand every line of code here. My intention is not to overwhelm you, just to give you some context. We'll come up for air in a second. It's really simple though. Here's a method on the server model where I update a database field to is deploying or is deploying to true. And then I dispatch a job called deploy where I pass in the server. And then inside of there, I sleep for four seconds to pretend that I'm actually deploying something. And then I update is deploying to false. Cool, cool. We're back for error. This is gonna deploy, uh, sorry, kick off a job. So because it's a job, we're gonna need a queue runner or job worker, whatever. I can't think of the words. Artisan queue listen or work, whatever you prefer. Um, I don't know the difference because I don't use cues all that often and I'm a total noob in that regard. So check this out. We have queue listen. I'm gonna pop this up. Now, if I hit deploy, we're gonna deploy that job and let's take a look at what happens. Hit deploy and something, oh, there we go. So it did happen there. So there it is, processing app jobs deploy, processed. So there's our queued job going on. And just as a reminder to make this crystal clear, the difference between this and the restart button is that when we hit deploy, this, this thing happens in 20 milliseconds because it's just kicking off the queued job. You can actually see the button get disabled for just, just a tiny amount of time. In fact, if we change this to slow 3G, when we hit deploy, there we go. We get that disabled button and all that does is kick off the job. It's not actually showing us that, you know, the thing is out deploying. Okay, makes sense. We good? We're good. All right, so deploy. What we wanna do is show deploying when we're actually deploying the thing. We want this to be disabled. And we can't just use wire loading because it's not just for the duration of a network request. It's for like a bespoke process in our system. So we're gonna say if server is deploying, that's just a little helper thing that I made, then see, now this, is a, this is a case where if the server is deploying, we wanna show the exception, but I don't like that. I like the, like the happy path to be the first fork in a conditional. So we're gonna use unless, which is the inverse of if in blade. So I'm saying, and this reads really well to me, unless the server is deploying, then show the deploy button because that's the thing that matters. Otherwise, show the, you know, the loading button, the deploying button. 
And I always end these as end if. Um, you can use end and less, but you know, most of these are just like abstractions on top of an if statement. So you can always just use end if. I don't know what to do. What should we do? Ah, we're gonna do end if. Okay. So let's think through what's gonna happen here now. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna click deploy on the front end, because this is what loads first. It's gonna send, it's gonna fire off that that uh, that queued job. And now deploying is gonna show. So let's take a look at that. Deploy, and let's pop open this queue thing here, clear that out, hit deploy, and there we go. We have that user feedback, the job is deploying, but now notice that the job is done and we're still showing that deploying because how does the front end know that something on the server was updated? You know, like we don't have any WebSocket setup going, we don't have any server sent events, you know, situation going on. We just have a primitive, you know, Laravel app. So what we can do, of course, like you just saw, we can add wire colon pull, which is gonna pull the server every two and a half seconds. So here we go, here we go, we're pulling the server. Now I'm gonna hit deploy. Now like four seconds later, it should shut off when it's done deploying because we're pulling that server. And there we go, it totally does. So you'd think that we might be done here or actually not. I hate this. I hate that feature. I don't think I would do it that way because look at how many requests we're wasting. Like how often does the user hit that deploy button on this page? Really, you know, it just seems like incredibly wasteful. It doesn't seem that wasteful to me up here because this is data that's constantly coming in. Wire polling makes sense. But down here, it's not. It's like, we're just gonna wait around taxing your server just for a user to click something, not cool. So here's a magic trick I've been told. I'm telling you, I've been told by some people who've seen this talk that this is like the drop of the talk. And people are like, make sure that you emphasize that point because that's actually kind of a money feature. So get ready, get your cameras out. Here comes the big feature. Wire poll. Livewire will only pull when wire poll exists in the template. So you can actually wrap it in a conditional and conditionally wire poll. And we don't even have to do anything like that. We can just toss it on this button here. And now only when the loading state is showing is Livewire gonna actually be pulling. And then when the loading state stops, the polling stops. So get ready. We restarted the page, we refreshed it. We have zero Ajax requests. We're chilling. We're not texting our server unnecessarily. I'm gonna hit deploy. Bam, the job gets queued, it's out there. Now Livewire is pulling the server. It's going, hey, are you done? Are you done? Hey, you're done. And now it stops pulling. We haven't wasted any requests. We're not sitting there taxing the server. So conditional polling is a super, it's like a power pattern for anything like this, for generating an exported CSV. You could imagine how easily you could store the process or like the progress of a deployment in the database and actually like pull and show progress as the deployment continues or the export generator continues or whatever it is. So that's pretty cool. I hope you think that's pretty cool because I totally do. And, uh, and that's that. So Let's assess the situation. Let's see how far we've come. We've taken a very staticky app. We've made it a lot faster and more interactive. So we went, we add a server, and there we go. We have this reactive conditional select where we can select stuff, FDA.com. <laughs> I do FDA all the time too. Uh, and I just realized that that's the Food and Drug Administration. Create, okay, now we have FDA.com. We go in, oh, sorry, missed the restart. We have these really cool restart buttons and they can they can handle themselves. They're all atomic. This is this is live wire, folks. We click into uh, Composer, sorry, Composer, what is wrong with me? CalebPorzio.com, okay? And we have that deferred loading goodness. We get the page right away. We're not slowing up and waiting around for Eloquent. We're showing those visits in a chart. We defer the loading of that. We got that really slick, cool loading indicator. Clearly he spent a lot of time on that. And then we hit deploy and we got that, that, uh, that loading state with a queued job, conditional wire polling. Yeah. So I feel like we've done a few cool things. This, this hopefully to you, what, what I want you to take away from this is live wire can be used to augment your existing applications. You don't have to sell out your whole front end to live wire. Although you should, it's a really good idea. But if you don't, if you want to have a vanilla Laravel app and really lean into the traditional tools, all the power to you. Livewire 
is going to, it's going to come in handy for those little interactions that you definitely need. And it's going to allow you to stay in blade land and uh, keep doing your thing. And that is that, that is, that's the app. So I hope you dug it. I hope you took away a few little notes, a few little tools. Let's see what time we're at. Okay. We're at a really good time. Let me just uh, close up here by selling you stuff. First thing I want to sell you is make VS code. Awesome. This is a course I came out with last year because I do stuff like this and people go, Hey, what is your theme? How did you get to do that? What's this shortcut key? Like I'm guessing you probably saw you know, uh, I'm tooting my own horn here, but you may have seen or may not have seen me do something with VS Code that you're like, oh, how did he just do that with his mouse? Well, I distilled it all into a course and I put a bunch of work into it um, to hopefully, you know, make everybody really good at VS Code and make your VS Code awesome. So go to makevscodeawesome.com if you want to learn how to make VS Code awesome. I actually like just before this talk, I was like, ah, if you're going to sell them something, at least give them a discount. So I put together uh, like a coupon code. So if you go to makevscodeawesome.com and use Laracon as a coupon code, you get 25% off. And I'm going to drop that after I think an hour from now. Um, so I'm just going to leave it out there for an hour. I think 25% is the biggest discount that I've ever given. These are not the actual prices, actually. I put, uh, you'll have to use the coupon code, you know. Um, so there you go. Hopefully you dig that. Enjoy that. The other thing I want to say is I didn't talk about Alpine and Alpine's got a ton of cool stuff coming soon. I'm rewriting Alpine and I've actually rewritten it. Alpine V3 is basically done and, uh, and I'm going to be souping it up. There's going to be a new docs site. Uh, we're going to launch Alpine V3 and there's going to be a bunch of cool new features and maybe a new course. So all that stuff is coming out. And if you want to be aware of stuff, and this goes for anything I do, if you want to be aware of stuff, go to laravelliveware.com and throw your email into this antiquated email box that I definitely need to update. Throw your email in there, hit subscribe, and you'll be on the big list that I have in ConvertKit to send people announcements. So as soon as I have stuff to say about Alpine, you're gonna hear about it. Also Twitter, of course, love Twitter, on it a lot. Big picture of me fly fishing. Um, follow me on Twitter if you wanna hang out there. I'm always down to chat and chill. So that is my talk. I hope you dug it. Have a great day. All right. Another killer talk. Great job. Thanks, Ian. That what that wire pole thing at the end. Wire pole, man. Isn't that a money feature? Right? It is a money feature. It's nice. Unbelievable. Yeah. I was pumped about that. Yeah, really good stuff. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Great job. Yep. Thanks, Ian.